All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the Bindu Bard YouTube channel, where I cover the latest crypto news every single day, Monday through Friday. So if you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the latest happenings in the crazy, crazy crypto space. And you can keep a rational head and a steady mindset through this irrational and crazy space uh, that is cryptocurrency. So without further ado, we got a lot of cool news to look at today. Our main story we will get to in a little bit, so make sure you stick around and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, but yeah, so grab a glass of water, grab some coffee, grab a snack. Do whatever you need to do to be prepared for today's video. If you are at the gym, shout out to you. If you're on a run, if you're running errands, whatever you're doing, laying on the couch, sitting in a nice recliner. <laughs> Maybe you're doing dishes. Maybe you're cooking dinner. Hope I covered all the bases there. Whoever, whatever you're doing, wherever you are in the world, I hope you are ready for the video today. So let's get started and again, hit that subscribe button, please, if you are new, not just for me, but for yourself as well, because I'm covering the news every single day, Monday through Friday, uh, helping you stay up to date with everything going on in the incredibly fast moving crypto space. So uh, today, Bitcoin ETF and Ethereum ETF inflows. We are taking a look at this every single day. We want to see this be green all across the board uh, to really signify the bull market. So we see Bitcoin is green on the weekly and on the daily. Uh, 6,000 Bitcoin inflow, 6,500 Bitcoin inflow on the week, 905 Bitcoin inflow on the daily. For Ethereum, we actually have a 1,283 Ethereum inflow on the daily, but for the weekly, we have a negative 12,000 ETH outflow or negative 12,000 ETH inflow, uh, 12,000 ETH outflow, same thing. Uh, and we have 352 ETH leaving grayscale uh, for today, but 1,000 ETH going into the grayscale mini trust and 502 ETH going into Bitwise, uh, 4,000 ETH for BlackRock on the week. Uh, and looks like Fidelity for Bitcoin had the most Bitcoin go in this week. It was 2,500 Bitcoin for the past seven days into Fidelity. So yeah, let's get into some very bullish tweets that I have pulled up. It is a very bullish time in the market. I'm very excited if you cannot tell. I have a fresh cup of coffee here with me. I've been drinking water as well. Make sure to drink some water, everybody. Stay hydrated, uh, stay healthy. Hope you're working out. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but yeah, so bullish tweet number one. This is from anonymous crypto prediction guy. His <laughs> at his is crypto underscore twitty air uh, prediction, and it is Bitcoin. It shows the Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin chart looks absolutely beautifully set up right now. Uh, it's just making this beautiful formation. Some would call a cup and handle, which is typically a bullish bullish chart formation where we have rinsed all the way down here here was the infamous ftx collapse uh where we had the bottom for you actually had quite a good bit of time to buy the bottom here on bitcoin then it shot up and it's been going up and up and up and then we peaked we, due to the etfs that was somewhat of a wild card we actually broke all-time high before the happening it's never happened in the history of bitcoin uh and then we've been consolidating and it looks absolutely primed to just send and, you know, if you haven't experienced it yet, maybe you just got into crypto or something, uh, you know, when things start to send in crypto, it happens fast and people get left behind very easily. So just, uh, you know, you might be tired of hearing that. Maybe you've been hearing that for a long time, but it does happen. And I think we will see that happening very soon for crypto, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for all coins. Uh, and it'll be very exciting. Next tweet I have here, actually, I think I want to talk about that tweet after we talk about this tweet. Altcoins in the last stage before the bull run, as in the 2016, 2017, 2020, 21 mega bull process. Altcoin wide with new narratives and new technologies will accompany the mega bull run. Alt season loading. And this is a nice tweet here showing comparisons to 20. 
2016 to 2017, where we had this uh, altcoin market cap. So that's the market combined market cap of all cryptos except for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is excluded. So that shows that these altcoins, the market cap, combined market cap shoots up to the roof, uh, which indicates price increasing at an incredible amount. So you see in 2016, there was a sideways consolidation after coming up from the bottom, uh, the accumulation at the bottom come up and then this little sideways, you know, pre, pre, uh, pre-moon, <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, the pre-moon section, kind of like forming a little takeoff platform to then just absolutely rip like crazy. That was 2017, 2020. You had a kind of a short little consolidation phase here and then just ripped up like crazy. Uh, and you can kind of see the diminishing returns here, can't you? Some people disagree. They say, "How is?" I, I've literally had this happen some uh, a long time ago on a on a live stream, someone was like, what are you talking about? Diminishing returns in crypto. The gains only get, get larger. And I'm like, that's not true at all. Uh, you can actually see that in the charts. Um, as more time goes on, like the, the mad gains are kind of harder to get, I think in crypto. And it's also like, they're less common. And you can literally see that in the total in the altcoin market cap for altcoins. Like, look how explosive this is. I mean, look at the Bitcoin chart. It used to go from, you know, it used to do a 50x, you know, to a 30x. To like the X's are going down over time. Um, you know, as more people are are figuring out crypto, they're getting into it. There's more projects. There's more noise. There's there's more liquidity. There's more like it's just there's less gains uh, because it becomes more mainstream. It becomes less risky. Uh, so that's kind of what we're seeing. So you can see here, 2017, huge giant run, 2021 giant run, still a giant run. And then now in 2024, we will see what happens. Uh, you know, and it's, it's also partly because going from a market, let's say, you know, for example, going from a market cap of 10 to 10 to 20. Okay. You just had to go up by 10, right? Uh, but going from a market cap of 100 million to 200 million, well, now you have to go up 100 million. So it takes even more money to push it up, you know, that level. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still lots of mad gains, but that's just kind of uh, the thing. Uh, but regardless, the whole point of me showing you this is that we are getting very close. And, you know, take all this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying, look, this is exactly what's going to happen. That is not what I'm saying at all, even with this Bitcoin chart, which has it peaking at like 150,000 per Bitcoin or so. I'm not saying this is exactly what's going to happen. Like no one knows exactly what's going to happen. And, you know, there's a lot of entertainers out here on YouTube, on Twitter, who tell you things with certainty. And that's what people want to hear. If you want to hear certainty, this is going to happen. If you want to hear exact certainty with all this stuff that's actually incredibly uncertain, incredibly volatile, incredibly unpredictable, uh, then I'm not the channel for you here. I try to keep it rational, keep it reasonable, uh, and just share my general thoughts on what's going on. And I'm never going to give you a, a guaranteed answer for something. Yes, this will definitely happen. No, I I, there's no way to know. So be, I don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you want certainty, you want exact, you know, this is going to happen, you know, find it somewhere else. But anyway, uh, either, regardless, I'm very bullish on crypto for the next year. I think we're going to take off in Q4. Do I have exact scribble showing you exactly how it's going to play out? No, I do not. But this is kind of a rough blueprint of what we could expect, uh, potentially. So that is very exciting. And you can feel it in the market. You can feel the feeling of bullishness coming back. People are getting excited. We're seeing different, uh, communities we're seeing coins start to really pump uh the pulse chain rh ecosystem is pumping you are seeing things on ethereum start to pump things start to take off the nero <laughs> if anyone's in that meme coin the narrow dog meme coin you have things just starting to really bubble and heat up titan x ecosystem has been performing very well uh the past few months since august so I mean, it's getting really exciting. Things are starting to bubble and fizz and pop. It's like, I like to use the boiling water analogy, but I will use a different one today of bacon. It's like when you put the bacon on the uh, stove and it's like kind of like making a little sizzle and then all of a sudden it's like pop, pop, pop and the grease is flying up and it's burning your arm and you're like, ah, 
we're getting to that point. We're, we're getting a little sizzle right now on that bacon, and soon we're going to devour the delicious bacon with waffles and syrup, and that will be the mad gains, the juicy mad gains. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so cool tweet here from this guy, Crash Crashes Clay. 69 he's like some he's kind of a big uh personality in the crypto twitter like meme space if you don't know about him uh you know he i i don't really know much about him besides that but this tweet was interesting to me uh who remembers in school it used to be the popular thing to hate on a particular kid and many people without knowing the kid would hate on him and that's that still happens in the real world with adults as well but anyway just because that's what everyone else did if that's how you move, you'll do jack shit in life. You really got to evaluate people and things yourself, not based on what others say. Or you end up moving, thinking, and being like everyone else. Applies to crypto and everything. If you just listen to what someone else is saying and let their thoughts and feelings become yours without knowing it, you lose your actual self. Uh, and this is so true. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people missed out on the Richard Hart bull run last cycle of hex going absolutely crazy. That's why a lot of people are going to miss out on a lot of coins this cycle. Uh, they're, you know, a lot of people are going to miss out on pulse, pulse X, hex, which I think are going to do phenomenal. Uh, but there's other coins too as well. So, you know, I think people, you really got to have an open mind and think for yourself because I think it's so easy to get into this sheep mindset, especially on crypto Twitter, especially, uh, you know, and if you're looking in the wrong places for information on crypto, like you get into this mindset where like you have such a closed mind and you think, you know, you close everything off. I think it's dangerous to do that in crypto no matter how sure something seems. Uh, it's definitely good to have an open mind. So just something to think about. But yeah, I think this is, you know, a lot of people who they just heard this about Richard Hart. They heard this about his ecosystem. They really have no idea. They like, that's literally what it's like. He's literally describing that in this tweet. It's, it's pretty funny. Like, <laughs> uh, which, which I don't think this guy even cares about Richard Hart or his ecosystem or anything. So it's kind of funny. Um, but we'll see, you know, we'll see if that plays out if Richard Hart is proven right uh, with his ecosystem flourishing and doing great, and we'll see if he gets the respect he deserves, uh, which I think he will. And like I said, the Pulse Chain ecosystem has been doing absolutely phenomenal the past few days. I hope everyone who's involved in that ecosystem listening has been enjoying the beautiful green candles. And I have a tweet here from KDP Crypto. Shout out to KDP, longtime uh, Pulse Chain influencer posting uh, lots of good stuff on Twitter. Uh, she says the RH ecosystem looks to be about to take off in the same way ETH did when it first launched. History rhymes, which will outperform. Our big bull run is almost here. This ecosystem will make many millionaires. Time to lock in, boys. And you can see rate of return, rate of return, rate of ROI. I, I'm totally having a brain meltdown right now. ROI from launch, return on investment. Oh my gosh, that's what it is. Apologies. <laughs> uh, return on investment from launch. And you see this big neon green line is Ethereum. And then these lines down here are incentive token, pulse, PHEX. And uh, yeah, that is it. And you can see it, it actually is eerily similar. It's kind of crazy. Uh, you had launch, you had a big dip, which everyone was kind of expecting. We came back up. Now we've had another big dip, retesting the lows. You could say PHEX actually even made a new low. Uh, and then now we're seeing this kind of pop up. And we'll see if it plays out exactly like this. Uh, again, take it all with a grain of salt. You never know. You know, history rhymes, yada, yada. Like, it's impossible to know, but... Regardless, I'm very excited, um, and things are looking very good. Uh, so, yeah, exciting times. I think the bottom could be in for the RH ecosystem, but, <laughs> but me and many others have said that before. But this time, this time, it really feels like it. So we shall see. Uh, all right, and then here's a good tweet that I thought was interesting from Alex Becker, another kind of like big mainstream crypto influencer. And, you know, I've talked 
down in the past and I continue to talk down on a lot of big crypto influencers, <laughs> uh, which I think is fair. I think I give fair criticism, but there is also good information as well. Uh, and that's kind of how these guys function. That's how big crypto pages function. They give you a lot of good info and then they you know, show you something and dump on your head. And then you easily forget that they took advantage of you and stole your money uh, because they give you such good info in between doing those things, right? Now, I don't know for sure about this guy or, or like, I don't, I'm not accusing this guy of anything. I'm just saying in general, that's typically the playbook. Um, but I feature these tweets and I feature news articles from these somewhat corrupt like news websites, crypto news websites as well, uh, because they do have some good information. Everything's not totally 100% good or 100% bad. I believe in nuance. Well, I know this crazy concept that's lost on the world uh, in today's time is nuance that, you know, things are, you got to dig a little deeper. And so, yeah, they have good tweets. There's good tweets from some of these big guys that we can look at, like Crash and Alex Becker. Um, and this tweet I thought was pretty good. You need, it may seem like everyone is too bullish right now. You need to step back on YouTube and Google crypto interest is still at worse than bear market lows. 85% of people have left, aka are so bearish they are not even interested. The hope you see here is the 15% left. Sentiment is still nowhere even remotely close to the 2021. We'd need to 3.5x current online action to get there, aka while it might seem like we are all bullish. The truth is most of the people in the space are so bearish that crypto is irrelevant to them. When you see my channel hitting 750k views for throwing together selfie vids, then then we might be in euphoria. And he uses the Google search volume for the word Bitcoin. Uh, and you can see, yeah, it's, it's actually incredibly low. And that is a really good signal. This is something that's really good to look at is the kind of social... Uh, signal and, and it kind of signifies, okay, we're at the top. And you can see that from back in 2021 when the top came in, back in 2017. The online social interest for crypto and Bitcoin and all digital assets hits like a peak. Um, and that's kind of a good metric to pay attention to. And we can see right now we are very, very low. No one is really paying attention to crypto right now. So we are in a good spot uh, in terms of accumulating still and being patient and not selling. That's my opinion. I don't care what you do, uh, but my opinion is I don't think it's a good time to sell crypto right now. It's a good time to accumulate. It's a good time to hold and be patient because uh, we look like we could be getting into one of these little things here. I mean, look at, look at how quickly it happened here in 2020. August, oh, we had a bit of interest. September, October, nothing going on. All of a sudden, November, boom. December, boom. January, boom. February, boom, top. <laughs> it's like it happens so fast. So that's what I've been saying. That's what I'm talking about. Crypto will just take off and leave you behind. So I hope you are all prepared for that if it happens. I'm not telling you, I'm not guaranteeing anything because I have no idea. Uh, it could not happen. We can just look at the past to try and figure out what will happen in the future. Uh, but, yeah, it, it can happen, and I think it will. Uh, but, again, take that with a grain of salt. I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just some guy with a camera and a microphone who is talking. <laughs> so listen to a lot of different people. Listen to me. Listen to Futters. Listen to people who don't like crypto. I like to do that. That's something I like to do. I, it used to make me upset. I'd listen to people. Like, I'd actively be like, oh, this guy's fudding, you know, a coin I hold. Like, I like, I remember listening to people would make FUD videos about Hex, which I liked a lot and still like a lot. Uh, but there haven't really been many FUD videos about it lately. But there used to be big, like, documentaries, uh, you know, come out about Hex that were like, this coin's terrible. And I'd be like, well, let me listen. And it would make me angry. But then I, I got comfortable actually listening and, and deciding for myself, okay, what am I, what am I hearing? What are they saying? Uh, and I would be able to decipher what was BS and what was like a valid criticism. And a lot of the time, a lot of it was BS. Like it really wasn't valid criticism, but that used to make me angry. I'd be like, this is such BS. It's making me angry. Uh, but I'm saying all this to say, you know, take in a lot of different sources of information and then decide for yourself on something. Kind of like we talked about this tweet before. Everyone likes to just hate on something and they're like, yeah, everyone's hating on it. Now I hate it. And, you know, that definitely happened with the mainstream crypto space and Richard Hart and uh, Hex and Polestain and Polsex. Uh, but it, make sure you're not doing that with anything 
you might see in crypto, especially when we're getting into this point of the crypto cycle where everything is just mega, mega bullish. Uh, so, or f starting to feel mega, mega bullish. But anyway, moving on, uh, a little bit of news here. China's central bank announces rate cut and injects liquidity. So that is exciting. They're cutting rates in China as well, which means a lot of liquidity will hit the market and people in China do like crypto, uh, I, I happen to know. Uh, so that's exciting. So here is uh, the big story of what could be the uh, black swan of the top of the crypto cycle, kind of like the FTX crash. I guess that wasn't the top of the cycle, uh, but it, it kind of signaled the bottom. Uh, so this could be something that could, maybe this is a big black swan that could happen in crypto. Maybe not. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of the USDT FUD that, you know, USDT, and maybe that's still a thing that to worry about. I don't really know. You know, the stablecoin USDT, it's not actually fully backed and it's just this big, you know, bubble waiting to pop and it'll implode the whole crypto space and crypto is being propped up by fake money. <sighs> but anyway, uh, you know, I've talked about this before and I've kind of alluded to this before, you know, Coinbase is the custodian for like all the ETFs practically, like almost all the ETFs. Coinbase is like, uh, you know, responsible for like keeping track of their Bitcoin which is kind of odd that this one exchange is uh, holding all the Bitcoin for all these ETFs. And so BlackRock is basically uh, trying to put something in place to make sure that they can, they're not going to get screwed, kind of like FTX did with a lot of people. They're basically saying that Coinbase would have to process withdrawals within 12 hours of getting instructions from an investor uh, to hopefully make sure Coinbase is on their toes and is not going to put them in a situation where they say, oh, sorry, we don't have all the Bitcoin that we're telling you you have. Uh, so Coinbase is the custodian for 10 of the 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs and eight of the nine spot Ether ETFs. That makes me very nervous. <laughs> That's very weird. I'm calling it right now. This could be something weird. I don't know, but we're going to, you know, it might be two years from now or something. It might be three years from now. Who knows? It might be like we might get to a point where this comes into play as something very not good. Uh, so this makes its custody custody practices a major concern for several industry participants uh, with BlackRock making the first move on this kind of uh, adjustment. ETF issuers might amend their custody agreements to reduce the settlement period. So like if they want to get Bitcoin out, they can, or ETH, they can get it within 12 hours. Uh, this would, and that's what the hopes of making sure Coinbase isn't selling more Bitcoin than they actually have. There's fears that they're selling fake Bitcoin, kind of like FTX was doing, uh, where they were telling people you have Bitcoin, but they actually didn't. It was just numbers on a screen. Uh, so the CEO of Coinbase came out on Twitter. Uh, you know, it, he said, you know, it's all okay. And he said, if you want audits, Deloitte audits us annually. We're a public company. I doubt our institutional clients want people dusting all their addresses and it's not our place to share for them. Uh, okay. Uh, so this did not sit well with many in the crypto community. Uh, who noted that the exchange only asks investors to trust its reserves without verification. Where have we heard this before? It has never worked out well with some, including credibly neutral VC co-founder Victor Boonin believes that Coinbase being a public company ensures that it cannot end up like FTX. Not everyone shares this view, including me. So just because something's a public company doesn't mean it can't crash and burn into smithereens. Ever heard of this thing called Enron? Uh, but anyway, uh, Jesse Powell founder of Kraken, who is a pretty good guy in the crypto space, from what I understand. He noted that being a public company could not have prevented FTX because there are also sham public companies. Yes. <laughs> it's like, what? People just make these absurd statements. This guy goes, oh, don't worry about Coinbase. It's a public company. It's going to be fine. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like, do people know how ridiculous the things they say are? Or they just say it and like, that's even, that's shady to me too. You know, someone just says that. It's like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? So... He added that FTX also passed traditional audits, and the best thing is proof of reserves showing the exchange as a reserve matching all its assets at a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm just going to tell you the obvious, you know, I don't have, I don't know for certain, but I will tell you the obvious facts in my mind is that Bitcoin or Coinbase does not have one-to-one -one ratio of all the Bitcoin they've been selling to these institutions. 
they uh, they don't have all the Bitcoin. They are selling paper Bitcoin to these ETFs. Uh, will it turn into a big deal that will crash the whole crypto market and Coinbase will crash and burn in a giant fiery uh, wreck? It could happen. There, like, it's not impossible. Like, it's it's really not impossible. Is it something to worry about right now? I don't think it's something to worry about right now. Uh, but it's something to. And will it actually happen? I don't know. But I mean, the fact that they won't, they won't just audit and say, look, we have everything we're saying that we have. And they're just saying, oh, well, this company audited us. So don't worry about it. Like Jesse Powell said, FTX did the same thing. Like, oh, this company audit. Okay. What's their relationship with this company? Oh, it turns out, you know, I'm not saying this is the, the truth, but oh, it turns out, you know, it's his uh, nephews, you know, whatever uncles, blah, 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 runs the company. And, you know, they, or, oh, it turns out they're uh, help, you know, giving them a little bonus for auditing the company just to thank them. Ha ha, nudge, nudge, hint, hint. You know what I mean? So the, <laughs> saying, oh, well, this company audited us, we're fine. That doesn't mean anything, especially when you have examples of that happening in the past and it wasn't the case. Now, you know, it might be fine. Coinbase could it could end up being fine, but it is weird. It is not very comfortable. And that's why I say, could this be the next kind of like black swan, as people call it, uh, where, oh my gosh, Coinbase, not Coinbase. How could this happen to Coinbase? It's like it, <laughs> last cycle, it was like Celsius and FTX and all these things. Terra Luna, you know, all these things people thought could never go down. Oh my gosh, they're so amazing. They thought they could never fail. Oh my gosh, it turns out they failed and they went down. And everyone's like, what? BlockFi, not BlockFi. <laughs> it's like, it can happen. So, you know, I'm tell I'm here telling you right now, get your head out of the sand. This nothing is certain in this space. Uh, like this could happen. It could happen. I'm not saying this could cancel the bull run. I think this this is something that would happen after the crash, right? Like right now, we're in a point where no one's trying to withdraw their Bitcoin necessarily or like sell it for dollars at the moment. Like like we're at the point of the crypto cycle where everything's popping off, where money is coming in. So that's what we saw last time, you know, as money started coming in, these companies like Celsius and BlockFi and all these little custodian companies saying, give us your crypto, give us your crypto, you can trust us. Uh, that's that's what happened in the kind of the moment where we are now, where everything started taking off and all these companies were like, you can trust us, you can trust us. And then all of a sudden market crashes, you know, 40% in, the, in a span of a week or something or more, you know, it, it, we get the volatility that is so common in crypto, everything crashes. All of a sudden people are like, hey, where's our money? Turns out these custodians were trading the money. They didn't have all the money they said they did. Uh, and it became like a bank run where everyone's like, give us our money, give us our money. And then it turns out they didn't have the money. Then the companies go bankrupt. So, you know, that was after the bull run, right? Where all that stuff happened. We are kind of, I think, at the beginning stages of the bull run. But this is something to keep in mind and goes along with something I'm talking about all the time on the channel is to actually take profit when you when the time comes. And it's not like it just happens at like a single moment. Okay, now's the moment. Take all my money out. It's like as we start getting further into the cycle, like if it plays out like I think it will, and I hope it will, and we all hope it will, and you're up a lot, you never know when the exact top will be for, you know, you start to just DCA out and you have to take money off the table uh, because so many people, the problem with crypto and the bull run is not that people can't get their portfolio to increase in value. That's the easiest part of this whole thing in my opinion, during a bull run is actually just is like everything starts to go up. It's so easy. And you think you're so smart. And a lot of times people think they're so smart. They think they're genius and they keep holding because they think it's going to keep going and they don't take any money out. And they're so scared to take money out. And it also doesn't feel real. The money's in crypto. It's not in, like it doesn't feel like real money yet. So you're just holding on to this dream that it's going to keep going forever. And then uh, you don't take the money out. It goes, crashes all the way down and you're like, oh, I had so much money. So please remember, you know, take money out because at some point, big crash happens. Everything goes down 80, 90 percent. At least it has in the past. So why wouldn't I think it'll happen again in the future? So, yeah, please remember uh, to take profit if you are up. Uh, you know, the money doesn't it's not real until it's actually in your bank account. Uh, that is my opinion of it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
anyway, moving on, that is the main article for today. Keep your eyes on it. And there's nuance. I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen. I'm not saying like anything like that, but it's something to keep our eye on and to be aware of because it is a little odd. 10 of the 11 Bitcoin ETFs, uh, eight of the nine Ethereum ETFs, one company, one company is keeping custody of all that. Hmm. Weird. Uh, you know, we love decentralization, don't we, guys, here in the crypto space? We're all about decentralization. Yeah, that's definitely not decentralization. Anyway, Kamala Harris finally breaks silence on crypto. So uh, my favorite subject, as you all know, who watch the channel uh, frequently. And if you're new, again, hit that subscribe button. I love talking about politics and I love talking about this election. It's just my favorite thing in the world. And yes, that is sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it looks like she made her first public statement about crypto on her election campaign during a Wall Street fundraiser. So uh, she vowed to encourage investment in AI and digital assets. It's interesting that she said it at a Wall Street fundraiser. Kind of tells you, uh, you know, what what might could be happening soon where, you know, maybe these Wall Street people are going to start to throw their money into crypto. And I mean, we already kind of see that where you have things like Fidelity and BlackRock and uh, other big firms accumulating crypto. Uh, so this is the first time she's talked about crypto since she became the Democratic Party front runner. Uh, so looks like from this tweet, it's not nearly as forward leaning as the concrete and visionary positions taken by Trump, but it's still noticeable because she recognizes digital asset innovation as being important and on par with AI. She understands that there's a path that promotes innovation while protecting consumers and investors. And her statement comes after weeks of outreach by her inner circle who are thoughtful and open minded on crypto. So that's kind of nice to see. I, I, you know, for, as a neutral person, I like to see that both candidates are being friendly about crypto. Uh, now, to be fair, the Democrats have already been in power for four years, and the SEC under them has been very unfair and kind of ridiculous towards crypto. So that's kind of the criticism there. Uh, whereas with Trump, we haven't really seen him do anything like that towards crypto. Uh, but yeah, so interesting stuff. I mean, I like uh, that's nice to see, in my opinion, both candidates kind of trying to pander to the crypto space. It kind of show it kind of is a testament to the crypto space. It shows that, uh, you know, people who like crypto, it's a, it's becoming a large amount of people that has to be taken seriously. Uh, and that's all that really this stuff depends on. You know, if everyone decided tomorrow crypto is stupid, okay, well, it would go to zero. Everyone would leave crypto. All the cryptos would go to zero. No, one, you know, if no one had money in it, it would have no value, right? It, it, it sure looks like over the years, over the last 10 years since crypto was created, that more and more people seem to get into crypto. More and more people seem to understand what it is. They understand that it's better or they like it more than traditional finance. There's some things in crypto that are better than traditional finance, some things that aren't. Uh, you would have to you know, decide that for yourself, whatever it is. But I think overall, people are realizing it is, it is you know, it has the potential to be what it's designed to be, which is a fairer uh, financial system. And, you know, why wouldn't the average person, if they really understood what it's about, why wouldn't they say, you know what, this is better? So I think that's kind of what's happening. And, you know, politics, it is a great way to measure, you know, what's important because they're just going to pander to whatever, you know, they want, you know, pander to whatever is going to, like, get people to vote for them. So it's kind of interesting. So, yeah. All right. Anthony Scaramucci says Trump is pulling Democrats into a centrist position on crypto regulation. Uh, that is very interesting because, it, you know, it seems like if there are a lot of people in crypto who didn't know who they were going to vote for, they see Trump being super into crypto. It might push them towards him. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's crypto. It's a testament to crypto where there's so many people into it now. These uh, candidates are having to talk about it because they're they're realizing, oh, my gosh, this is like enough of the population that I need to actually try to get them to like me. And I need to actually like be nice to crypto <laughs> and actually help crypto. Uh, so Democrats are now starting to distance themselves from Capitol Hill's harshest crypto critics. Uh, so that is very interesting. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting article. 
And then another article here, and if you want to look more into these articles that I share, they are all linked in the description. All the tweets, everything I share is linked in the description of the video, so go down and check that out. Ohio emerges as battleground for crypto as industry lobbyists donate $38 million ahead of election rep- in this, and then it says a report. Yes, obviously this is a report. Uh, so, yeah, I thought this was interesting. It looks like a network of crypto super PACs have spent $38 million in Ohio trying to get Republican Bernie Morin a seat in the U.S. Senate. Morin is competing against Sherrod Brown, who who is designated as strongly anti-crypto by the Coinbase-backed advocacy group Stand With Crypto. Brown voted against the reversing of SAB 121 and has claimed that Hamas is being fueled by cryptocurrencies, which, uh, if you don't know, that has been, like, seriously debunked as false. Uh, that's just not true at all. Uh, and it's actually because crypt- because of the transparent nature of crypto, uh, terrorists actually are can't spend the crypto. So they're saying, stop sending us crypto because we can't spend it, actually, because people know we're we're terrorists and we can't cash it out. <laughs> so it's actually the nature of crypto is actually helping with that. Whereas uh, it's funny how a lot of these big terrorist groups, there seems to, they seem to get funded. Uh, and it seems like that happens with cash and bank in the banking system. Oh, huh, that's weird. Anyway. Uh, so a spokesperson for Morin said he has a deep understanding of crypto tech. Unlike Sherrod Brown, who she says doesn't know the difference between blockchain and a chainsaw. (laughs) That's pretty funny. Uh, (laughs) So it looks like crypto political groups are planning on spending $32 million between August 22nd and the end of September to boost his campaign. Money is flowing into the race from a group called Defend American Jobs, a group Rolling Stone reports is effectively a subsidiary of Fairshake, a crypto-focused political action committee funded by Coinbase, Ripple, and Andresen Horowitz. Brown has also made a slew of public comments critical of the digital asset sector. In late 2022, the senator said the crypto market was a complicated, unregulated pot of money. <laughs> uh So he says, I've spent much of the last eight years and a half in this job as chair of the Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee, educating my colleagues and trying to educate the public about crypto and the dangers that it presents to our security as a nation and the consumers that get hoodwinked by them. Uh, All right. (laughs) But anyway, like with everything, like I said, there's nuance. Anyone framing crypto as 100% a danger and all it is is people getting hoodwinked, that's completely misleading. Yes, there... That does happen. Yes, there's bad things, but there's also good things. And that's true about everything. It's like saying, oh my God, cars are so bad because people can wreck in them and die. It's like, yeah, but you can also get places really fast and on your own accord. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I don't have to explain that to most of you guys listening. We got smart people here on the channel. Shout out to you. Uh, If you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you can be a smart person who listens into the channel here. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, apologies for no video yesterday. I kind of just took the day off. I had chores to do. I had things to do. And I was just like, I was like, I actually got on the computer and was gathering stuff. And I was like, man, I'm just not up for it today. I was going to put out a tweet. I didn't like a tweet saying, sorry, no video today. I didn't. I felt like it was fine. It didn't really matter. Uh, Got cool people here on the channel who listen in. So I think everyone's fine with it. Uh, But yeah, video today. Hope you liked it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, share it with a friend, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.